and a warm welcome to Nationwide. Today, I'm Elizabeth Omori with the news. ECOWAS leaders are to collectively act and work in concert towards pragmatically addressing the social, economic, political, security and environmental challenges bedeviling the sub-region with a view to providing the people better prospects in life. President Muhammad Buhari threw the challenge at the opening of the 60th Ordinary Session of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the Economic Community of West African States in Abuja. State House Correspondent Adamo Sambo reports. The ECOWAS leaders are meeting for the sixth time in the last one year to deal with various issues of concern and take realistic as well as practical decisions in the greater interests of the community. The heads of state and government are here this time to, amongst others, receive a special report on the ECOWAS single currency program, mediation and security council, appointment of ECOWAS champion for the return of cultural artifacts, as well as make a formal declaration on climate. The new variant Omicron has already been found in three member states and has led to unfortunate impositions of travel bans by some countries which are unjustified and unacceptable. Meanwhile, the availability of vaccines continues to remain a problem. We must continue to pursue national and regional efforts to fight COVID-19 and move rapidly into the domestic production of vaccines for the protection of our citizens and for the growth and development of our economies. For President Muhammad Buhari, the challenges of COVID-19 and its catastrophic consequences on the socio-economic environment of the sub-region have continued to torment the people. He said apart from political, security and socio-economic challenges, threats are also looming around environmental degradation and climate change on farming systems. As a people, we aspire to create a borderless, peaceful, prosperous subdivision where people have the capacity to access and harness its resources through the creation of opportunities for sustainable development, job creation, and environmental preservation. Today's realities remind us of the need to continue to forge stronger solidarity in order to address the new challenges, including the current third wave of the pandemic and its Omicron variant. Goodwill messages from the United Nations Secretary General and the Chairperson of the African Union commended ECOWAS for effectively managing and responding to the various challenges confronting West Africa and reaffirmed their commitment to supporting efforts at achieving peace, security and prosperity. At the event, four West Africans who distinguished themselves in their various fields of endeavor were honored with the 2020 ECOWAS Prize of Excellence and rewarded cash prizes ranging from ten to $25,000. They are Professor Basil Bruno Kunohewe for Science and Technology, Akisi Delphin Luko and Nicole Wetewete Edinog for Arts and Letters, as well as Lema Robata Gowi for Deserving Citizen of the community. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Nigeria and the Burkina Bay government are making moves to establish a business council that will strengthen agreements between the two countries for development cooperation. Foreign desk correspondent Usman Ali reports that this was part of the outcome of a high level meeting of the Nigeria Burkina Faso Joint Commission in Abuja. Fruits of the Wagadugu diplomatic deal with Nigeria two years ago, signed and sealed by the representatives of the two countries. The areas of agreements are agriculture, women and girl child development, telecommunications, ICT, information and media, as well as fight against human trafficking. We will consider uh, perhaps establishing a business council between Nigeria and Burkina Faso because government has the responsibility to create an enabling environment to facilitate what the players on ground are the private sector. 
Nigeria's foreign policy prioritizes peace and stability in Africa. And so even with the recent shakeup in the Burkina government, due process was ensured for the success of this engagement. Uh, the cabinet changes in Burkina Faso on its own has necessitated that we go a bit outside the norm. But I'm happy to say we've gotten the approvals of the relevant authorities for us to be able to do what we're doing here today. We believe in this cooperation. The next meeting will focus on the review of the implementation of the agreements. Usman Aliu, NTA News. In a bit of entertainment and business, the five-day maiden edition of the Enjoy Nigeria Expo 2021 has ended in Abuja with promising projections for the country's entertainment and business sectors. Boss De Abel reports that the expo was run it off with culture at its best. The Enjoy Nigeria Expo came with a lot of fond memories that will stand the test of time. An initiative of Enjoy Nigeria project in collaboration A future assured through cultural creativity was the theme, and Nigeria's creative ingenuity was not in short supply. Nigeria has no cost whatsoever to be economically poor. We're going to use the content of this event to continually sensitize Nigerians to the fact that these sectors are money generators. One thing that is very important, what you have seen here is exportation of our brand identity. That is where tourism comes in. It's a mustard seed that has just been planted that will grow to be a big baobab tree. It's an annual event to promote MSMEs and the creative industry in Nigeria. And we also promote the diversification of the economy for sustainable development. In Abuja, Boss said they able. NT News. Inculcating the core values of honesty, mutual respect, equity, cooperation, among others, in the younger ones is necessary to addressing the growing insecurity, violent extremism, thuggery, and kidnapping facing the country. This was the thrust of a sensitization program organized by the National Orientation Agency in Abelkota, Ogun State. Yemi Dalimo tells us more. The National Orientation Agency said the program is aimed at mobilizing citizens to act in ways that promote peace, harmony, and national development. Ogun State Director of the agency, Christopher Obadino, said values for the orientation and attitudinal changes are needed to address the root cause of the virus threats to our national security. Everybody, you know, address this issue of values, our national values, values of patriotism, integrity, hard work, you know, respect for others, you know, good neighborliness. Speakers at the occasion, including Ugose Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tomi Koka, represented NDLA, police and the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, charged parents to be alive to their responsibilities of effective monitoring of their world towards addressing the societal ills. As parents and as women, that we have a lot to do. I'm impressed with what I had today and the, the hit to the, to the very problem of Nigerians. Especially the hard drugs. They have caused a lot of harm than good to Nigerians. The program has as its theme national security, reorientation against political thuggery, kidnapping, drug addiction, radicalism, and violent extremism. In Abelkuta, Yebidalimo, NC News. Nigeria is to adopt new strategies in addressing internal security challenges as the Minister of Interior sets target for its agencies. Abdurrahman Jibrila reports that this is coming at the end of the second ministerial retreat of the ministry in Eloring Kwara State. Maintaining internal security is one of the core mandates of the Interior Ministry and to achieve this, taking proactive measures is key. It's been three days of extensive knowledge sharing by officials in the Interior Ministry to live up to this mandate. Considering contemporary challenges, frequent jail attacks and other threats on critical government infrastructure, 
just cases in point. We are going to leverage on this retreat and then begin to marshal out strategies on how we are going to deploy our personnel, you know, to protect nation's critical assets and, and infrastructure. We intensify our training and train our, our uh, arms corps personnel and we, we also try to gather intelligence so as to contain the issue of uh, uh, these jet attacks. We identify ICT as the only tool to manage the massive border we have. I think by the time we amend or repeal and come up with new art, I'm sure uh, there will be a more robust fire service, both at the federal and the state level. Now the report of syndicate sessions presented by the six agencies under the Interior Ministry, major areas of security threat identified in the presentation. It's a great step, but what is of more greater relevance is the faithful implementation of the content of the document. In Elor in Kwara State, Abraman Jibrila, NTA News. Show of Ogbomo Show joins his ancestors at 95. Let's now join Kemi in our studio in Ibadan for details of this and other stories. Hello, Kemi. Elizabeth and Wem, welcome to Ibadan. Non-collection of large number of permanent voter cards by some residents of your state has continued to be a source of concern to the Independent National Electoral Commissioner, INEC. Correspondent to Inka Omole reports that the resident electoral commissioner in the state engaged stakeholders on the way forward. Statistics released by INEC office in New York State at the meeting showed that over 700,000 voters' cards still remained uncollected. The commission says it is employing various advocacy methods to ensure prompt collection of the cards and get new voters registered. We will continue to talk. That is why we have called these stakeholders. And for whatever we have given out here, it's expected that we pass to all other levels of, uh, in the, of people in, the, in New York State. So our appeal is that people should know that they have to collect their card, they have to register. I have a mobile bus that is going between my constituency that register people. And we are encouraging them, once you finish that one, it's not stopping there. Make sure you go back I mean, to the INEC office in each local government, go and get your degree card. Those engaged are political office holders, parties, executives, traditional rulers, market leaders and security agencies, among others. Many people will be aware and see the reason why they should come out and collect the, the card. Let's see what's going to be the aftermath of this stakeholders meeting. Uh, we've been working hand in hand with the INEC to make sure that uh, people are not discouraged. So it's our own responsibility to make sure we sensitize them more. To resolve any issue relating to voters' card, INEC urged consigned individual to visit local government office of the commission in their areas in Ibadan. Show of Ogbomosho land of Bauladun ni Oyewumi Ajagumbade III has joined his ancestors at the age of 95. This was announced by Dr. Aderemi Oyewumi on behalf of the royal family. Correspondent Lukman Hassan has the situation reports from the palace in Ogbomosho. Passing away of the show of Ogbomosho land came as a shock to many residents of the ancient town. The people of the town have been to the palace to confirm the death of their king, spent over 48 years on the throne. Reign of Shon Oba Jimo Oladuni at Jagubade III was said to have brought many developments to the ancient town, among which include attractions of many institutions of learning to the area. We see it as a loss of a revived leader that uh, we have known for over uh, 48 years, a leader that has brought development to Bumosho in all ramifications from industrialization to uh, agriculture to educational system. Obajima Oladuni Ajagubade the third was born on the 27th of May 1926 to Obabelo Afolabi Ajagubade the second and Seliat Oladuni, he attended St. Patrick Primary School, Okepad, Ibadan, from 1932 to 1938, and attended Ogbomosho People's Institute. 
Obajima was a trader with interest in hospitality business. Obajima Oladuni Ajagubade III ascended the throne on October 24, 1973. Preparations are in top gear for the burial ceremony of the first class traditional holder. Lokman Hassan, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. Nationwide continues with Elizabeth in Abuja. Good afternoon. Thank you, Kemi. Meanwhile, President Mohammed Buhari condoles with the family of His Royal Highness, the son of Ubumosho Land, Oba Oladoni Uyeumi Ajagbade III, on the demise of the highly revered traditional ruler earlier on Sunday. President Mohammed Buhari commiserates with the government and people of Oyo State, especially the indigenous of Ubomosho land on the demise of the frontline traditional ruler whose reign of 48 years reinforced the town as a land of peace accommodating and a bastion of history and tradition. President Buhari also joins the Oyo State Council of Obas, sons and daughters of Ubomosho land in mourning the first class traditional ruler who will forever be remembered for his counsel and commitment to the unity and harmony within their ranks. The president prays that Almighty Allah will repose his soul. President Muhammad Buhari has extended the sympathies of the nation to the government and people of the United States of America, following devastating tornadoes reaping across six states, leaving destruction and death on their trail. In our statement, President Buhari said the destruction of towns, flattening of houses, schools, hospitals, businesses and other social infrastructure on a scale never seen before is deeply saddening. He urged fellow citizens to join the rest of the world in praying for the deceased and the quick recovery of those of victims and their families at this difficult time. You're watching Nationwide on NTA and it continues shortly after this break to stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. The Nigerian Union of Pensioners is appealing to the federal government to review their monthly pension, an exercise they say is long overdue. President of the Union, Comrade Godwin Abumisi, made the appeal at the 20th National Pensioners Day in Abuja. The retirees are recommending constitutional punishment to be added to the ongoing amendment to the 1990. 1999 constitution for state governors who have refused to follow the steps taken by the federal government to better the condition of pensioners in both state and local government areas. It is very pertinent for me at this juncture to call on the federal and state governments to rise up to the occasion by complying with the constitutional provisions of sections 1733 and 2103 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which stipulates a five-year pension increase for state pensioners or together with any workers' salary review, whichever is earlier. Meanwhile, the pensioners' bodies commending President Muhammad Buhari for setting up an interministerial committee to enable retirees enroll in the National Health Insurance Scheme, as well as the establishment and inauguration of birth of the National Senior Citizens Center. The second round of the 2021 Nigerian National Mathematics Science Olympiad competition has taken place across the country. Students who qualified for the competition in the FCT participated at government secondary school, say Zone 3. Well, normally we had a center in NTIC and preparation as well. And our teachers are qualified. We had necessary books and materials. And I think the provision should be made for other schools to have it too. Meanwhile, inspecting the exercise, Director General of the National Mathematics Center, Professor Promise Membini, emphasized the need for training and retraining of sciences and mathematics teachers in order to improve their capacity to teach and improve the knowledge and performance of students in the subject. Professor Membini further stated that regular training of mathematics teachers prepares them to face the challenges of the teaching and learning of the subject. I think all teachers 
within FCT to train, in, you know what it means. It did funds. You know, students or children, what they see, they don't forget. So we have mathematical games that we have developed. We have textbooks that once you read, you understand. Even you that doesn't understand math and doesn't know anything about math, if you read, you understand. So we are doing our best. The problem is that people are afraid of math. It's just an ordinary perception. Away from education, officials of the Kanji Lake National Park has intercepted six trucks loaded with illegally acquired timber in Wawa Burku local government area of Niger State. This is living up to its mandate of preserving and protecting vegetation and wildlife towards enhancing tourism and revenue generation. The acting conservator of the park Sule Zato, who led the team, advocated an effective legislation to prosecute violators of environmental laws and regulations. Kabir Ibrahim reports. Over the years, environmental degradation has become a common concern to all nations across the world, Nigeria inclusive. This is largely due to the detrimental consequences on the ecosystem, ranging from environmental pollution aggravated soil erosion, flooding, and desertification, among others, which are often made worse by the activities of loggers. I am a driver, and we were contacted to convey the timber wood from Babana to Lagos. I never knew it was illegal until we were arrested. Even wildlife reservation areas are not spared, as confirmed by the acting conservator of the Kenji Lake National Park. We intercepted them because they were locked inside the National Park. And these are species that are regarded as endangered species. These beings are not endangered species. Nobody is allowed to log out even inside the National Park, not talk of logging inside the National Park. These trees that we are seeing, they are our natural heritage. And the vegetation as a whole play a very important role to the survival of human beings. While soliciting the continued support of the general public for useful information that could lead to the arrest or perpetrators, the National Kenji Lake Conservator assured that anyone found wanting will be made to face the full route of the law. In Nibusa, Kabir Abdullahi, NTA News. It's time to join Adiola in Lagos for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Adiola, and how is the mega city? Hello, Elizabeth. The mega city is doing just well. Now, Nigeria's quest to translate its huge scientific and innovative findings into real-time wealth and economic development is stimulating a partnership with entrepreneurs. The goal is to adopt existing researches and commercialize for industrial and services application. Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Ogunnaya Onu, at a breakfast meeting in Lagos believes the move is the surest way of opening up global markets for local content. Michael Olaleye reports. This kitchen marble top with bowl is made from the dust of granite and marble dust. Shagun Tayo is the inventor. There are four times the tensile strength of uh, marble in its natural form. Here is also a locally made speed limit device, cheaper and efficient than the imported brand. From remote generator starter, an automatic switch over to LED bulb made in Nigeria, the 17 agencies vested with the responsibility of research and scientific findings in Nigeria are making huge impact, but converting them to wealth is still at the preliminary stage. This forum, convened by the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, is a ready-made market for both the scientists and business community to strike a deal on commercialization of research. I call on all Nigerian entrepreneurs and investors to look inward and expand their businesses by helping to transform research findings into products, goods, and services. You will make more money by doing so. The idea seems to excite the business community as the call for the design of a framework for the activation of the process was echoed. It might be helpful to consider the creation of an independent central coordination agency 
under the ministry with a mandate to ensure timely and effective commercialization of innovations in Nigeria. For the 17 research agencies in Nigeria, it is a good concept that will leverage on their already solid platform. We have over 250 technology with 100 of them ready for uptake. This plan, already incorporated in the National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy, is aimed at increasing job opportunities, reduce the spate of insecurity and expand the economic frontiers of the country. In Lagos, Michael Alaleye, NT News. Anemia induced by malnutrition in women has been identified as one major contributory factor to the prevalence of maternal and infant mortality. This informed a one-day advocacy on healthy nutrition program for indigent women in local governments organized by the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation in Lagos. Musa Toliat has details. Malnutrition is lack of proper nutrition caused by not having enough to eat or not eating enough of the right things. One of the fallout of this condition is iron deficiency, which reduces the chances of the human body to produce sufficient red blood cells needed to distribute oxygen around the body. This advocacy program is therefore designed to improve the nutritional status, reduce wastage, curb stunted growth, and micronutrient deficiencies in women. We thought that um, it would be good for us to teach the women the right nutrition for their children and for themselves because we realize that a lot of people eat but the food they eat has no nutritional value to their body. The program also serves as a veritable social intervention of the Lagos State Government with the intent to ensure qualitative food consumption and general well-being of women. For us, the women take priority. And then we know that women are the ones who cook uh, meals for the family and all that. This is a nutrition program. High point of the event is the distribution of consumables to the indigent women at the program. I'm so happy. I feel so impressed because we never knew it was true until when we came. And definitely it has happened. I advise Lagos, Lagos State Governor to continue looking after people, poor people, to give them something to eat. Lagos State Government is taking the campaign on healthy feeding to the five divisions across the state to address the increased nutritional needs associated with menstruation, pregnancy, and lactation in women of reproductive age. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. And those are the stories from Lagos. Elizabeth is back to you for more on Nationwide. Thank you so much, Adeola. Ahead of the 2023 general election, the Independent National Electoral Commission Sokoto Office has inspected the Sokoto Office of the All Progressives Congress. Sheho Mohammed Data reports that the commission will inspect offices of other registered political parties in the state. The INEC officials were received and briefed by the Sokoto City FEC chairman, Isa Sedek Achida. The aim of the inspection by the INEC is to know the office location of the party as well as meet with the leadership of the party. Sokoto City FEC chairman Isa Sedek Achida told the INEC officials that the party has offices in all the 20 city local government areas and 244 wards in the state. Issues relating to ongoing continued voter registration exercise was discussed during the meeting. We complain that the exercise be decentralized from the local governments to what level. They inform us that it is in three stages. They have finished the first, second, and now they are now going into the third one, which is going to be extended into the what levels. We are sort of satisfied with it, and we are happy to hear that. The INEC officials were conducted around various department of the party's office. In Sakoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. Police Officers' Wives Association is engaging spouses of police personnel to make them more productive and better home managers. Francis Form reports that this was at the 2021 Power Week in Abuja. 
When a woman is empowered, the entire family is empowered. This wise saying was demonstrated at the poor meeting, where spouses of police personnel were empowered with requisite skills to assist them in keeping the home front intact, while their husbands go out for their sensitive job in protecting lives and property. By being poor, see, but this new face of power is a different thing entirely for us. We have achieved a lot and we are hoping to achieve more. The police wife man said today is change. It's change for better, it's change towards love, towards unity and towards togetherness. Wife of the Inspector General of Police, Hajira al Kalibaba, is confident that engagements of this nature redefines their role in nurturing a well-cultured generation, as well as coping with the challenges of being wife of a police officer. That is how we have established it. So that is why we are telling them, go from places to places to encourage our women. You can empower one person and the person will be happy and you, the provider, is happy too. Deputy Inspector General of Police, Joseph Egbenike, who stood in for the Inspector General of Police, acknowledges the contributions of their spouses in the task of policing the nation. It is, it is um, like it's MS Twins. There are no way you can succeed without your wife succeeding. Neither can the wife succeed without you. So for the boy to come up with this green light, for me, it's long overdue. The 2021 week is geared towards unveiling the new phase of power and its three points agenda. Francis from NTA News. To wrap up the United Nations 16 Days activity, Activism on Gender-Based Violence Against Women, the Nigeria Association of Women Journalists, South South Zone, organized a one-day training for female journalists in the zone to stay abreast of new trends in journalism. Joy Ubani reports. The Nigeria Association of Women Journalists, Nawoj, South South Zone, has joined the world to mark the last day of 16 days activism on gender-based violence. The event, which was held at the Nigerian Union of Journalists Press Center, Akwaibom State Council, brought together Nawojans from various states in the South South region. Nawoj was established on issues that affect women and children. And I know that over the years, Nawoj has been at the forefront of reporting not just gender-based violence, but every other thing that affects women and children. I know that we used to have difficulties as journalists reporting violence. But the fact that the survivors, that's what they call, could have been raped or abused sexually, would hardly want to tell their story. And that's because um, there was this problem of stigma. I charge you again. So we say sitting with your tenses. You don't need to go to big big grammar. Just simple English. So the people following you are reading your story will understand you. Resource persons took female journalists on ethical reporting of gender-based violence, data gathering on gender reports, and how to use mobile phones in reporting violence. Participants say the training is refreshing. I find a very important aspect of the um, reportage for journalists because in everything we do, we must consider our safety. Reporting violence is something that's not very easy, especially for the female. Thinking about how you can score a big journalism goal, but basically how to help the victim heal and cut a reoccurrence of this menace. Violence is on the upsurge. I think there is need to effectively report it. As the world advocates ending gender-based violence, it is the hope of professionals, governments, and society to witness no violence. In your joy, Obani, NTA News. Time to head to Kaduna, where Suleiman is standing by with some reports for us. Hello, Suleiman. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome to Kaduna Network Center. The government of Jigawa State and the British government, through its Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office in Nigeria, are working towards consolidating the 20 years of partnership that has been impacting on the lives of the citizens. This is the thrust of a meeting between the two parties in Dusi. Muhammad Askira, 
has details. The development partnership has over the last 20 years been focusing on infrastructure, economic empowerment, accountability and transparency in governance, social protection, health and education. Work implementation team of the collaboration holds meeting quarterly in the state to ensure effective implementation of life-touching projects. This Governor Muhammad Badur Abubakar stated has yielded a desired result, particularly in the areas of health, education and economic empowerment in the state. Virtually, uh, they come was offers what they want to do for the state and ask the state what they have to do in return. So that's the mutual accountability framework. So that uh, when they are supporting us, they expect us to do some things that will further increase the level of uh, support and development for the people. And it's basically in about five sectors in uh, health education, uh, social protection, uh, governance, and um, economic empowerment. And you feel the partnership that was signed six months ago at the review today is a new kind of partnership. It's based on mutual asks from the UK and offers from the UK. Mr. Sam Waldock further says the partnership will continue until the state is developed economically and socially. Muhammad Askira. NTA News. Police authorities in, in Zone 1 with headquarters in Kanu will spare no expense in making crime unattractive to existing and aspiring criminals. This is part of the fallout of a performance review meeting convened by Assistant Inspector General of Police Abubakar Sadiq Bello, where the efficacy of community policing in the zone was particularly applauded. Johannes Hassan reports. The Assistant Inspector General of Police Zone 1, Commissioners of Kano and Jiga Commands, and other senior officers in the command on performance appraisal of the upcoming year, as well as strategizing peace and security operations for the upcoming year. Although a lot of challenges have been encountered in their operational jurisdiction during the period under review, AIG Abubakar Sadiq Bello said, the system of community policing has contributed to a substantial reduction in crime rates. Hence, he advocated for more proactive synergy among stakeholders so as to consolidate the gains. At least uh, we're making progress. We're able to uh, contain the various security challenges. And uh, in fact, we have a reduction uh, in uh, such uh, crime and criminalities when compared uh, with the previous years. The commissioners of Kano and Jigao commands have pledged to ensure more commitment in operations in the right direction. The father pleaded to ensure standard ethical conduct by all officers and men of the police under their care. In Kano, Yahana Sahasa, NTE News. Just Network Center is next, but after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Lagos State has witnessed a swift rise in COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. The state this Saturday recorded 483 fresh cases out of the 612 cases nationwide. Figures released by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control late Saturday showed that the Federal Capital Territory, which came second, reported 49 fresh cases, while Rivers posted 38. No death was recorded with the total deaths from the virus so far standing at 2,981. Total confirmed cases are 217,063, with 207,703 survivors discharged. The UK-Nigeria Diaspora COVID-19 Response Consortium has called on the UK government to immediately receive its decision to place Nigeria on the red list of countries. In a statement, the consortium describes the decision as unjustifiable without providing additional scientific reasons either publicly, publicly or at the intergovernmental level, while the plan for a review and decision by the UK government on the 20th of December 2021 is a punitive delay. A failure to reverse the ban or increase the vaccine supply to Africa, the statement says, will be counterproductive to Western countries as a risk of more 
complex mutations of the virus in the largely unvaccinated parts of the world will result in persistence of COVID-19. Now, in other news, 2021, another eventful year for members of Rotary Club District 9125 Abuja embarking on humanitarian services to communities in dear need of essentials of life. Lives impacted positively, and it's time to, for self assessment for better outing in 2022 as members of the club meet in Abuja. The event reflects the mood of the season. Personality, age and ranks have no consideration here, but celebration and all its trappings dominating. Rotary Club, known for its humanitarian gestures, has continued to make tremendous impact in actualizing social projects, zooming into advocacy for the girl child, water and sanitation, maternal and child health, an endless list. We have also ensured that the people with disability were fed. Because we could not bring all of them here, we went into their community, into their colony, to ensure that they too partake out of the joy of Christmas. Just a little sum can go a long way in helping a young girl in every community to become better and to have a better life. Games, dance, mimes and karaoke were on the menu list for the competition. Playing in the bouncy castle. This is what Rochi is all about. Everybody here is happy. You can see how the children, the parents, everybody is excited. Celebration at its best and also hoping to come up with the best of people oriented projects as members of Rotary Club District 9125 Abuja cruise into 2022. Elizabeth Omori. Nasara State Government is sustaining its commitment towards ensuring food security by flagging off the 2022 dry season farming. Aliou Tijani Mohammed reports that the State Government is disbursing 6,000 bags of assorted fertilizers to be sold at subsidized price of 7,000 Naira to farmers. Rated among the top producers of cassava, sesame seed in the country, and other crops, Natural State Government says it is supporting all-year-round farming with the launch of the dry season farming to boost food production. Farmers are elated with the early arrival of the fertilizers and are hopeful of bumper harvest. Each bag of fertilizer is to be sold at 7,000 Naira to farmers. Chairman of Local Government Council and All Farmers Association of Nigeria, AFAN, are to coordinate the sale of fertilizers in their communities. To have it at this time of December is very apt, and I believe that the farmers will make the best use of it. Governor Abdullahi Sule warns against diversion of the commodity, insisting that it should be sold only to genuine farmers. Endeavor is a demonstration of our collective efforts and passion for agricultural development towards the attainment of sustainable food security in the country. Chairman of Lafia Local Government Area and the Emir of Lafia applaud state government for the disbursement and assured that the product would be sold to farmers directly in Lafia. Aliou Tijan Mohamed, NTA News. Now let's talk road safety. Human error is a major contributory factor to road accidents, especially during festive periods. To ensure a hedge-free U-type celebration, experts emphasize the need for motorists and travelers to exercise caution and avoid rush and night journeys during the season and even beyond. Achebang Basi reports. The U-tight season is usually characterized by inflow of traffic within and outside the city of Calabar. Some areas in the metropolis usually considered as flashpoints during festive seasons are already policed by security personnel who are determined to enforce safety in Calabar during this Yule tide. People see this period as a rush period. It's equally not a rush period, it's a dangerous period because in the process of rushing, you rush and become a, have a problem on the road, like keep advancing. If you couldn't achieve anything from January till the end of November, it's not these two weeks 
that will make you to achieve it. To minimize the chaotic traffic situation experienced along the Dukbani Itu Ikonik Bene and Calabar Ikomogoja highways during the season, a team of security personnel have been deployed to the area to enforce free flow of traffic. We extended our campaign to, to motor parks. Every Sunday we do send our members to the, the churches where they continue with the advocacy. To forestall incidences of road crashes during the season and beyond, motorists and travelers are advised to ensure strict adherence to road safety tips. In Calabar, Achibombasi, Given the rush in commercial activities that are usually noticed at motor parks during festive periods, the roads also get busier. To this end, Asabe Tanimo Williams examines the response level of critical stakeholders in ensuring sanity on the roads at this period. Advent of the popular ember months leading up to Christmas safe motoring environments to raise the consciousness of drivers and other road users on the best approach to scale down crashes has been a campaign by relevant authorities in a traditional approach. Findings show that Abuja, the nation's capital, being centrally located in the country, ordinarily draws high volumes of traffic from visitors either seeking to do business in the territory or for pleasure. This situation puts men and officers of the road safety core constantly on their toes to ensure orderliness. We are fully prepared. We know there's always an increase in human and vehicular traffic during this period. And that's why we started the Ember Month campaign as far back as uh, September, making sure that we sensitize the motoring public. The Department for Road Traffic Services maintains that curtailing the growing wave of mishaps on the roads across the nation can no longer be left to the Road Safety Corps alone. We equally intensify uh, local uh, patrol where our men, you can see them all on the road to ensure that uh, vehicles that apply in the road are roadworthy. And we'll continue to intensify patrol, especially at the entry and uh, exit point of the city. To achieve a far-reaching effect in instilling some level of discipline in the road users during the Ember months, stakeholders such as the NURTW listed measures including regular checks, prohibition of overloaded vehicles from taking off at parks, sensitization of the public to the dangers of boarding vehicles outside designated points as some efforts. I appeal to passengers not to patronize roadside uh, commercial vehicle operators. They should enter there. Sometimes they, they believe that that is cheaper. But is it if you enter a cheaper vehicle and end up a dead person? The hope for safer roads, however, is for motorists to cooperate with stakeholders as in their slogan, it is only the living that celebrates. In Abuja, as the Bethany Williams, NTA News. And next is sports updates. Reactions have continued to trail the emergence of Samuel Eto'o as the president of Cameroon Football Association.